Hello and welcome to the first annual Big Recon on Sports Mock NFL Draft. It's only going to be one round because one, I'm old, and two, I'm not staying up for two days to do this. So here we are, well, well a month out from the draft that's in my other hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, which is set to party, gentlemen. It is absolutely set to party. They cannot wait until this thing is going. Hi, Zach. Hello. Um, my son just got home. Can I say hi? Say hi. Hello. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Zach? <laughs> so we are missing one of our boys. Uh, we're missing Tone from Bucketeers, and um, you know, hopefully he signs in. If not, the three of us are going to get get it going, and we'll wing it from here. And now, when I do the draft recap, maybe I'll have the boys back on, and we'll see what we think moving from there. So. To introduce who I got, everybody who's watching knows the guy in the middle. That's Alex from Row 7 out in Chicago. But everybody, you haven't seen this guy since our live draft reaction show where we sat there for three plus hours last year. And then our phones exploded when the Green Bay Packers drafted Jordan Love after we decided to go to bed. Frank Estrab coming all the way from Long Island. Frank, it's good to see you again, buddy. How's things? Yeah, it's good to be back. Um, I was just telling these guys that I haven't uh, done a podcast or, or got really gotten behind the mic and... You know, since last May, so um, I'm excited to be back and I'm ready to go. Beautiful. So since I said Tone isn't going to be here, we're going to open the draft, and I'm going to say it just like Roger is: the 2021 Big Reek and Mock Draft is open. Hold on, come on, play. I had to. Uh, <laughs> so. I'm going to take the first pick, and I am not going to do what I told the boys I was going to do offline. Um, and I said I was going to do something to set the world on fire because of who the new head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars is. And that is, of course, Urban Meyer, the former coach at Ohio State. So I am going to go where everybody has said they are going to go, and I am going to take Trevor Lawrence at number one for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, listen, guys... Uh, Alex, when Frank and I do this, we kind of explain the picks, kind of give our rationale behind them. This is a no-brainer. This, Unfortunately, he's the top-rated quarterback in the draft. Um, I know people who live down where Frank lives wished he would have been at number two, but uh, Trevor Lawrence goes to Jacksonville. Really no surprise there, right? Not really. <laughs> no. So, Frank, you're on the clock with the Jets. What are we doing? Uh, um... I'm going to continue the chalk, and I'm going to pull the trigger on Zach Wilson. Um, you know, the, the Joe Douglas is at his pro day, and there's, there's questions about Sam Darnold, and, you know, we know the story by now. Um, I, they, I, I would say it's either Zach Wilson or trade down, and for the sake of the mock, we'll take Zach Wilson because, I mean, just – I think we tend to overrate prospects – in general, and especially quarterbacks. So picking any of these quarterbacks, obviously there's potential there. Um, and next to Trevor Lawrence, I think Zach Wilson has the highest ceiling just because of all the, the tangible traits like accuracy, mobility, um, just the way he moves his vision. Um, yeah, I, I think this is another no-brainer unless you can move out of the pick because really, he's the best player on the board. I don't really know what else you would do. And then, you know, you can re- start kind of a financial clock here and then move on from Sam, Sam Darnold. If you believed in Darnold, would you take? Would you have taken one of the wide receivers at two? I would have traded down. I would have tried to get okay. Miami, Miami up probably. Um, okay. So, Alex, you had the NFC West. You are I on did. the board at number three with the San Francisco 49ers. The San Francisco 49ers will take quarterback out of Ohio State. Justin Fields, no doubt about it. Um, I, I heard some uh, some uh, chatter the other day about John Lynch saying that Garoppolo was the guy I call BS as far as I'm concerned. There's no chance uh, as far as I'm concerned that you let this guy sit. In, in terms of com uh, QB comparison, I think that uh, Fields is the guy to go to. He's a dual threat. He can run. He's an accurate passer, and he avoids the turnover, which we know that has been the Achilles heel for – for Jimmy G, as, and as much as I want to believe in Jimmy G, I think he's gonna he's gonna take a seat on the bench. So this should be no shock as well to Justin Fields going to San Francisco. Yeah, no, I I agree that the three quarterbacks go one through three. Um, listen, I've watched more Fields probably than everybody here because of my affiliation, and this he's legit. 
And if you give him the weapons, he'll be legit. And I think San Francisco can do that with their rebuilt line and with Kittle coming back and all the health issues they had last year. And who Jimmy G's going back to New England. Can we all just say this now, please? Bill's going to get his guy back and Kraft's going to have to deal with it. I was I was even hearing some chatter that he might find his way back home. Where is he from? Uh, like Northwest Illinois, like Glendale Heights, which is like our plus north of Chicago. Would you want him in Chicago? What's that? Would you want him? In, oh, of course, it's Andy Dalton or him. So yeah, I guess. I mean, right now I I take a plumber off the street. So Frank, this dude has been railing against the entire Chicago Bears organization for months. <laughs> <laughs> Right, 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 really still. We, we deserve it. We deserve it. But that's that's nine. What's what's that? Seventeen picks away. So, no. Yeah, agreed. Um, and now Atlanta's up. Now let's all really quickly discuss Atlanta's needs. Besides, you know, a team. Um, they need weapons. They need to protect Matty Ice. They need a running game. Um, Frank, where would you? Where do you think they should go? And we won't make a pick, but we'll we'll die. The to- team's tone was going to do. Let's just dissect where we think they should go. I'm taking Kyle Pitts here. You know, I thought about that. Yeah, because and uh, Alex, what did I tell you? Kyle Pitts you will right. be the first pass catcher off the board. Mm-hmm. You were right. Tight end size, wide receiver, forty time. I mean, he's a no brainer for a guy who needs weapons. So you know what? Let's do that, Frank. Let's go with your pick there at number four, and we'll put Kyle Pitts on the Atlanta Falcons. Give Matty Ice and his Twilight some uh, some help. Yeah. Could they go quarterback? Yeah, of course. I mean, Trey Lance, you could, you could, um, you know, there's buzz around him. And, I mean, I would think maybe Mac Jones, but that's probably too high. But, you know, you don't know where a GM's head is at. Um, but Kyle Pitts is the best player on the board, best pass catcher on the board. No, I agree. Um, I think um, uh, even though he lit my boys up in the national title game, I think Devontae Smith was a big uh his numbers were a product of what he had around him with multiple, yeah. multiple NFL guys around him. Um, so, okay, Kyle Pitts at four, which means I'm up on the clock with Cincinnati and I actually mocked this right and they will take Penny Sewell out of Oregon to play offensive line. Listen, Joe Burrow was the man last year. He played great. I saw him, tw- I saw him once, of course, against the Browns. It was a shootout. He's got something. They need to protect him. This cannot be Tim Couch Part 2. So, Penny Sewell goes... <laughs> it can't be. They need the offensive line. Penny Sewell goes here uh, to play offensive line in front of Joe Burrow. Pretty easy pick on that one. He's a top-rated O-lineman in the draft. How many years has it been since we've had uh, with an O-lineman in the top five? Like the last four or five? So, Miami's up. So that's you, Frank. What you got? Uh, Dolphins uh, make Jamar Chase. Uh, uh, they're bringing him down to Miami. That's big. Yeah. I, that's I would big. Be, I would say if we're playing around with the Falcons at four, I would I would be interested to see how Hammer Smith would compliment a Calvin Ridley mm-hmm. and, and Julio at a time and then, you know, move on from him. But um, for the Dolphins' sake, as simple as build around Tua. I mean, you – uh, like I think I went probably a little too deep, and I burnt myself out by uh, deliberating between certain prospects throughout the last couple of years. But Jamar Chase is better than Devonta Smith uh, in terms of um, coming into the next level. I mean, his, his body control and the way he can uh, create separation is is the best in this year's class, and you know he has a lot of potential. So just getting to a weapon is a priority number one. And Sewell's obviously if he's if the Bengals, for some reason, wouldn't take him. Which wouldn't there, shock me. Yeah. Um, Jamar Chase is here, so I'm going to take him. Gotcha. No, I think that's solid. Um, you know, I almost, if hope if Sewell was there, I would prefer him with Tua just because of the injury history. Um, you and I have had the Tua argument all last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, I like Jamar Chase there. He needs another weapon. Um, and, listen, Miami... Trade it up there for a reason, so hopefully it's to do that. Alex, my friend, you're back up, and it is your favorite team from that team up that stayed up north, the Detroit Lions. So I was kind of flip flopping too as well, and I think um, 
Frank, you took you took you somewhat took my pick, but I was like I said on the on the fence. As far as I'm concerned, they need weapons on offense. You got to go Devonta Smith, uh, naturally explosive player. I think he's arguably probably the second best receiver uh, compared to Jamar Chase out of LSU. Uh, naturally explosive. You, Mike, you seen what he did uh, against Ohio State? Don't that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to remind you. <laughs> But I mean, the, I think the only thing that re- he really has going against him is the fact that he's kind of slender. But I mean, he can work on that kind of, you know, get bulk in the in the weight room with uh, with the Lions. And as far as I'm concerned, they need help because Marvin Jones is in Jacksonville, and now Kenny Galladay is a giant. So who is who is Jared Goff going to now throw the ball to? Well, Jared Goff had a lot of weapons, didn't know who to throw the ball to before. So I don't know why you think what draft or wide receiver is going to tell him who to throw the ball to. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're at Carolina, which would have been another one of Tones' picks. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to set the world on fire. Carolina takes Mac Jones. Oh, boy. Listen, they got rid of Cam for a reason. Teddy Bridgewater, for as much as a mo- of a mobile quarterback as we think he is, isn't what Cam is. He wants Matt Rule wants a pocket passer. Who was the best pocket passer in the draft? It's Mac Jones. He's not the dual threat. If Carolina builds a line around him, he can do what he did at Alabama. Does not turn the ball over, and he's smart as hell. I mean, you go from a scout team quarterback who mouths off to Nick Saban to a Heisman finalist. I know I just ruined Bill Belichick's day. I know you two are looking at me like I got six heads. But I like Carolina taking Mac Jones there at number eight. I mean, that's that's definitely high, considering that I've seen some mock drafts have him fall into the second round, but... I could definitely see him going round one. I can see him going round one, too, and I thought, okay, maybe Carolina gets a weapon and takes another year at Teddy Bridgewater, but without... I don't trust Trey Lance. I'm sorry. I, it's You played one game as a against a scrub team as a uh, as basically a showboat game, and then you sat down? Come on, man. I can't do that. So it's back to me and the Denver Broncos, and I am going to go defense, and I'm going to go... Um, NFL legacy and take Patrick Sertain the second. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> uh, do you not like uh, that, Frank? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a great pick, but um, I had him lined up. But you know, you... <laughs> <laughs> I owed you for one from from two years ago. <laughs> uh, but listen, Denver needs to rebuild the defense. I know they just they resign or they act. Took, picked up the option for, um, oh, geez, I'm having a brain lapse again. Super Bowl MVP. What the heck's his name? Defensive end. Von Miller. Von Miller. They picked him up. They still have Bradley Chubb on the other side. They need help in the secondary. Uh, Bradley Roby, who was an Ohio State guy who, who was there when they won that Super Bowl, is no longer there. I like Sertain in that spot. Now, Frank... Did you do? I know you did film breakdowns last year, and you worked with your buddy, who's the uh, defensive back. Did you do any of that stuff leading up to this, or did you just kind of do your hands-on look at the numbers stuff? Well, yeah, I'm not a big numbers guy, but I, I tried to mix it up a little bit more because, like I said, I, I I probably went a little bit too deep for the purposes of myself, my own mental health, and then you know, <laughs> just um, just in general, but. Yeah, no, I tried to mix it up a little bit more this year. Okay. So you are now up for the next three picks in a row, my friend. Yeah. Um, and we will start with your most hated, your second most hated nemesis and those Dallas Cowboys. It's probably number one. Um, oh, I hate Philly more. No, no, I don't. <laughs> well, actually... I would. I was more respectable towards Philly because I enjoyed Carson Wentz, but now that he's in India, I guess I don't really have a reason to, you know. But uh, yeah, Dallas. Uh, I was gonna take Sertain here. Okay. And I'll just. I'm gonna slot Horn in here, JC Horn. Okay. I think he's the best. Uh, I think corners a need, and he's the second best corner. You wouldn't do. Um... Oh, who's the other one whose father played played for Alabama? Sertain wasn't. Sertain was with Bama. Who was the one? He was with Florida. It was another. It was another second generation defensive back. Oh. 
Why is Asante Samuel sticking to my head? It, uh, Asante Samuel Jr., right? Yeah. I think. You think he's better than Samuel? Yeah. I okay. like his physicality more. Um, okay. I think he would fit in nice with Philly, too. But, uh, yeah, Dallas takes him. Okay. Well, it's your home pick, Frank. Who are you yeah. taking to make your New York Giants better? This is actually more versatile considering their pre-agency moves, um, a relationship with Joe Judge, uh, restructuring contracts. I have a lot of options here. I actually like Vera Tucker here. Hmm. Most. Because I think, I mentioned that versatility. I, I think he, um, we, we moved on from Kevin Zeitler. So having him in at tackle is just kind of, I, I think the two things you do here at 11 is either that or uh, bolster the defense. And with Devonta Smith gone and Jamar Chase, but well, Jamar Chase wasn't really in the conversation. But uh, with Devonta Smith gone, I don't really like Waddle. Okay. They do at 11. So um, defense or offensive line and fair Tucker's the best available. I like that pick too, especially you don't know what you're going to have from uh, from Saquon coming in, so you got to bolster the line and give him some more room. Mm-hmm. So it's the last year, third pick in a row, sir. The Philadelphia Eagles, the shit show that is the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, so I, I, I uh, would take Samuel here, actually, because I, I mentioned the need for corner. And I, I, I'm repeating myself. I sound like a broke record with best available. But, um, I, yeah, maybe I should have flipped that. Horn, Horn's physicality would have been nice on the uh, Eagles. But, um, yeah, I like Samuel here just at, based on need. And maybe not the best player available. Maybe I'm reaching. But um, I can't think of anything else with the um, receivers or Devonta Smith off the board. You could take Waddle here again, like, the, like I mentioned with the Giants. Yeah. But, um, well, Philly's secondary is pretty old, though, isn't it? Yeah. Besides Darius Slay, and, you know, it's, it's still getting carved up. Yeah, that I think that's more a, a product of their defense being on the field too much. But, no, I like Samuel there, too. Um, You were doing the NFC West, right? And I was doing the AFC West? Alex? Yeah, I got All right. So, for the Chargers, West. I'm going to take Jalen Waddell here. Let's give Herbert some we- another weapon. Um, their line's not bad. Their defense had injury issues. Uh, so let's give him a, a wide receiver who can work the sidelines and get open and give him Jalen Waddle there. So let's go back to the North. Alex, Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota needs an offensive tackle. They need to block their quarterback who they have and Kirk Cousins. Uh, but most importantly, you need to kind of keep and treasure uh, Dalvin Cook. So I think they're going to take Christian Darisol out of uh, Virginia Tech. I was between him and uh, Leatherwood out of Alabama. But you just need somebody who can kind of really protect uh, and kind of open up the that, that field, that open space for Dalvin Cook. That's really what I'm looking at. And especially because they're, it's looking like, I, I don't know if it's guaranteed or if, if it's on the fence, but they're losing Riley Reef, I think one of their significant offensive t- uh, linemen, so it's only right uh, for them to kind of protect what they have. Gotcha. No, I like that. I think they do need line. Um, that's a good move. So, New England. Frank, back to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, with Mac Jones off the board, I, I was mentioned I was eyeing him too. Um, I-, I think he fits really well with the uh, just Belichick. He did those three levels of the field. You mentioned that pocket passing, but with him off the board, Zayvon Collins from Tulsa, um, putting him opposite side of a returning Kyle Van Noy, uh, or Van Noy, uh, my bad. But um, the versatility, I mean, the, I mentioned that with Vera Tucker, but he's a 3-4 linebacker, right? He, um, yeah. Yeah, so so I, having that explosiveness off the edge is, you know, nobody's going to complain. No, not at all. And that's who I had at 26 to the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm reaching, but uh, those two are the only ones that I was eyeing for the Patriots. Uh, Listen, Jones. you're not really reaching. Uh, I'll be honest with you. They need help on defense, especially now that Patrick Chung's retired. Uh-huh. And I know Chung plays safety, but if you front seven can cause more problems, your back four aren't going to be nearly as... They don't need to be nearly as dynamic. Um, Arizona. 
Alex. Arizona, he's, his name has been said already, but I think they got to go with J.C. Horn. Uh, they got a gap right now at quarterback with Patrick Horn, Horn went, at, went to Dallas at oh, 10. Come on. <laughs> come on. It's a good thing that this is a uh, mock draft, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, because otherwise Arizona would be up, uh, you know what, Creek. Here's a name for you. Uh-huh. Would you take a flyer on Sean Wade? I suppose like, I, I, I could also, I, I could agree with that as well, too. I just think that... He's got to play slot. He cannot play outside. We learned that. Right. right. Frank, you're right. the defensive back guy. Where, do you, if Wade goes here, do you think he is going to have to learn a lot more? Or is he going to be able to plug and play in Arizona? I'm not really sure what the um, Arizona... Well, that's I'm not really sure what Arizona's defensive um, goings about is. They, they were a bit, they were improved um, up front with Isaiah Simmons and, and that front seven, but how was the secondary? It was okay. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was kind of middle of the road. But Patrick Peterson's in Minnesota now. So I think if Horn's off the board here, you may see another Buckeye corner go in the first round. I think that's I think that's realistic. It's a yeah. realistic. Oh, so I get Gruden. Oh, can't stand this man. Um, you know quarterback, what? Quarterback, 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 quarterback. <laughs> Frank, him and I talked about this the other night. <laughs> and I said, do you see Gruden trading up to do something stupid? And he keeps asking me, why? I said, because it's Gruden. <laughs> who is who was the defensive lineman he took at like number six or seven? That everybody kind of went, what are you doing? Uh, Clown, Clown Clown That's right. He hasn't been bad. At four, I think. Yep. Uh, yeah, here we go. Trey Lance goes to the Raiders. There it is. <laughs> Gruden, I, I don't think Gruden hated someone this much since Al Davis with Derek Carr. I mean, it's just, it's hilarious. Derek Carr is a good quarterback. He's not his brother. Derek Carr's a good quarterback. I don't know what Gruden's issue is with him, but he's going quarterback. He's going Trey Lance. Uh, Miami's second pick of the first round. Frank, what you got? Uh, defensive end. Uh, the kid from Michigan, uh, Kuwaiti Pay. Good pick. Get him out of there so my guys can play better. <laughs> uh, listen, he's good. He's real good. Yeah. And especially when we had this conversation about Big Ten offensive linemen and how much I love them. Uh, yeah, listen, you fight those big boys on that, in that conference, you got to be good to get off the edge. So, no, I, I like that pick. So you're up again, Washington football team. And then watch the world explode on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a couple options here. Let me uh, let me think this over for like two seconds. Take your time. Oh, and Alex, you took Pittsburgh's pick for me, by the way, with Darishaw. Did I? Yeah. You good. can you can hang them. It's as long pick. as Pittsburgh gets worse, I'm good. <laughs> I did you a favor. I, I thank you. You're welcome. I'm in between. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull the trigger on. Um, one second. You're good, man. Take your time. There's a, it, there's an infinite clock here. No worries, dude. Th- we right. are not. This is not draft day. There's not a three shot of us in the clock in the background. Although the trades felt like draft day. So I'm thinking defense here. I just can't decide on what. You flipping a coin? I mean, they're set at, at D-line. Yeah. They could use a linebacker. I would have liked, I would have liked Collins here. I, 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 uh, I, got, I, <laughs> I really like him. But um, what do you, what do you guys think? Because I can't decide. That's um. Me. Oh, I thought that was something over here. <laughs> um, let me see. I 
you know, he opted out last year, but Micah Parsons is a very good linebacker yeah. uh, out of Penn State. Uh, the kid with the name from Notre Dame. What is his name now? Is it a Wosuk something? Because I figured he'd be off the board. He's not somebody I really dove oh, into. Jeremiah Owosu. That's him. He's another top-rated linebacker. Um, were you thinking that or secondary? <laughs> no, I, I, you, you affirmed Parsons for me. Uh, I was thinking, you know, there's the off-the-field stuff, but having him at 17, this is 17, right? 19. Uh, 19. Um, sorry. But uh, having him here is like he, he fell in this late in the teens. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's a, that's a slam dunk. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Listen, he ran a four four nine. Yeah. I mean that's insanity. Um and he's good he's good sideline to sideline. He can stop the run. Uh not so great in coverage. Just you know, I watch him once a year for the first couple years of his when he was in college. And Ohio State's tight ends had some fun with them in the middle of the field. So I wouldn't like him in coverage, but you know, he's good sideline to sideline. He can stuff the run. And in that division with backs like Zeke and uh, Saquon. Saquon and whatever Philly's going to come up with, you need to be able to stuff the run against the two top teams in the Giants and the Cowboys. So, no, I like that move. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out, but um, best value. A- absolutely. A- no, absolutely. That's that's a great move. And if, listen, he falls to 19, somebody's doing something wrong. Yeah. Because, I mean, as much as I like Zayvon Collins, he did play at Tulsa. He's not playing that top echelon uh, competition every week, and Parsons did it against the biggest <laughs> names in the game. I mean, he played Michigan every year, played Ohio State every year. Um, he did his job, and he did it well. And I think that's one of the reasons Penn State couldn't get it going this year is he wasn't on the field. So now we come to the 20th pick in the first round of the NFL draft, and we get to that team known as the Monsters of the Midway. The Chicago Bears. We're and gonna trade it for the for <laughs> seven eighth round draft picks. <laughs> I told you, Frank, it's about to get funny in here. <laughs> I have never seen someone hate their team this much since I used to be a Jet fan. It's just bad. <laughs> I mean, I said this the other day on uh, Joey's podcast, and I went a little Stephen A. Smith. Did you really? I, I, I hit him with the Chicago Bears. Are the New York Jets of the NFC? That's what I said. And it's not the but, first time you said that. No, it's not the it's not the first time. But, so, are you going to bring mercy to your to your soul here? Or are you really going off I, the deep end? No, I, I am. I'm, I'm going to do them. I'm going to do them a favor because they can't seem to figure it out themselves. So, I'm going to go uh, protect your quarterback, whoever that may be. You know, whether it's Foles uh, or Dalton or Whoever likes to stand back there and just, you know, get paint. hit. Yeah, yeah. Paint, you know, watch, watch paint dry, whatever. Maybe Zach said, look pretty. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they got to go offensive tackle slash center. If he falls this far, Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama, I think it would just do them justice. I know that they're probably hoping and, you know, keeping their fingers crossed that they'll find a quarterback or a wide receiver when that's not really their ultimate need. They need to protect uh, their quarterback. Uh, that's, I mean, it's not like it's an asset to them right now, uh, but right now with their big hole in Jermaine Effetti, who they re-signed, who should have been relegated to play a different sport as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, they, you got to go Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. You, you need blocking. You got you got to. I like that. No, I like that move, and I got to tell you, as I sat down to write down the order where we're going before this, and I sat here at 20, I went to Chicago, and I went, he's either going to lose his mind or he's going to make a better pick than Nagy in that front office. And I think you just made a better pick than Nagy in that front office. You know what? I'll take a $500,000 contract. You don't even need to give me a million. $500,000, I'll make the pick. <laughs> just for the one pick, right? One, one pick, and, then I'm, and I'm out the door. You won't ever <laughs> see me again. But they'll, but they'll thank me in a couple of years. Most likely. So we're back to a couple of Tones' teams next, and then we're back to you, Frank, with the, um, you know. That, again. No, the Jets. Oh. Um, we've hit the two I Miami. Have, I have this loaded up, too. I'm actually I'm ready for this one. Yeah, I have um, the, what is it? I have one of the sites on my uh, tablet behind me, and I wrote everything out. Yeah, we're, we're at 21. It's the Indianapolis Colts. So, gentlemen, 
Tone was supposed to take this as he was doing the two South divisions. With the addition of Carson Wentz and the draft capital that they gave up to get him, where do you think Indy needs to go here? Uh, Frank, I'm going to start with you. Is this something that their defense needs to get better, or do they need to give uh, you know, Carson some more weapons? Does it mean? Yeah, it's to you, dude. No, you froze for a sec. Sorry. Oh, no, my bad. Um... I would add defense, but it depends on how the board shakes out. Um, there is more defensive value at this at this stage, I think. Uh, if a receiver falls, I wouldn't mind adding, but that is a that is a uh, that room is getting crowded with Paris Campbell and T. Y. Hilton and the rest. But uh, yeah, I'm just thinking this out. If defensive. What what's the uh what's the outside of the offensive line looking like? Because I know they have that strong interior. Well, I know, yeah the the exterior of the offensive line was really something they needed. Uh, is it Costanzo was hurt the end of last year, but he's an interior guy, right? So no, he didn't play against the Browns. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I. I, I, I mean, don't want to spoil my Dolphins pick, but. Uh, if Slater's there, yeah, I was going to say Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern's a good idea here. Yeah. Um, listen, he like I told Alex well, when we did the I last show. Again, Jets. I meant Jets. Yeah, I, I I when I told Alex last time him and I talked, listen, Slater was Patty Fitz's big dog on that line, and that line played very well in in front of their quarterbacks the last couple of years. He was the anchor of an offensive line that went to two uh, Big Ten championship games in three years. So, listen, I, I like that pick there. I really do. So, now we got Tennessee. And Tennessee, I'm surprised we didn't have this guy on here already. Alex, what do you think of Tennessee taking Caleb Farley, the defensive back out of uh, Virginia Tech? I like it. I yeah. Guess I could get to... Go ahead. I mean, they got lit up by a few teams. And they let Lamar throw the ball. Yeah. Which is an indictment, if you, if you ask me. This is what I'm saying. Um, Frank, if you had a, the Tennessee pick, outside of defensive back, which, I mean, it's pretty much universal. They kind of need help in the secondary. Would you bolster the line a little bit more, maybe? Give Derrick Henry bigger holes to run through? Or would you look, if a quarterback is available... To replace Ryan Tannehill. Well, would replace mean this year in the immediate? I would say have him if you're down at the bottom of the first round, have him sit a year. Yeah. Well, no, I know, but I was trying to um, kind of work out where you're going with, like a Trey Lance if he falls there. A Trey Lance if he falls there, I think he needs a year to sit. I, I listen. Yeah. I would trade down. I would trade down there if like a. If that defensive, if that cornerback, if that J.C. Horn or that um, that Asante Samuel or, or Samuel or the or opposite the guy opposite J.C. Horn too, I, I'm blanking on his name, but I would trade down if he they're not immediately there for a maybe a quarterback or a reach for Wyatt Davis at the beginning of the second round, end of the first, depending on how far you can want to go down. But um, yeah, I think you guys nailed it on the head with the uh, corner. No, and like I said, I just thought that their immediate need that could be filled at this part of the draft would would be easier to fill it at corner than anything else. Yeah. So you're on the you're on the clock again, my friend. What do you got for those wonderful New York Jets? Well, there's a lot of um, corner getting mocked here too. With we talk about the value, but um, I, I don't like anybody left, and I spoiled my uh, original. I was going to have Slater go here to go opposite uh, Mackie Beckton. Oh, that would have been huge. However, can't do that anymore. So, um, I'm going to defer to you guys. You want to bolster the line in front of whatever quarterback they have? Yeah. Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State. Yeah, so we're not. Okay. You wouldn't trade down? You would take him at 23? I don't know if he lasts past the first round if you don't. Um, he's one of the top guys. I, I feel he's one of the top guys. I mean, when you block for guys who had the years that J.K. Dobbins and Trey Sermon at the end of this year did, 
And Justin Fields is one of the least hit quarterbacks in, in college football. Mm-hmm. And just to preview the college football preview, uh, by the way, he's the only one leaving that offensive line. Um, it, I like him. <laughs> nice look, Alex. <laughs> Um, I like him there. Yes, Slater would have been awesome to book in with Mackay Becton. Um, that would have been huge. But listen, it's man, if he'd have shown, we'd have probably had something different. Because you know he would have taken somebody crazy for his brother's team. He probably would have. He, he told me he's he's been having internet issues. So has he? Dude, that yeah, sucks. But I think he's at home though, so I don't know what. Maybe just internet down, whatever. When I do the wrap up show, maybe I'll do the wrap up show with him. And uh, go from there. He's on Super Bowl Hangover. That guy. He's yes. a bu- he's a Bucks fan, Frank. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I remember when I was I was writing with them. Um, oh, nice. That's right. You wrote for Timeskew. Yeah. All right. So it's so we got um, who we take here. We took Wyatt Davis. It's the Steelers next. Your boys. Oh, oh I'm Jesus. sorry. That's your boys. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Not my boys, but my pick. Um, yeah. <sighs> what do they not need? Let me find. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm no, gonna do this. A, on, no, no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it legit. I'm gonna do it legit. Um, listen, they've got a lot of holes. They've got a lot of holes. Um, any any quarterbacks left? Here's the problem with me giving them a quarterback. You forget who they signed. I did forget. Dwayne I Haskins is backing up Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, okay. So, I mean, if I give, I got to give my boy a chance in an organization that actually knows what they're doing, unlike Washington. But I'm going to go Tevin Jenkins, the O tackle from Oklahoma State, uh, from Oklahoma State. Okay. Um, I think he's the one right, but I think him and Wyatt Davis could be interchangeable. Ah, oh, we lost Frank. Um. We're good. You and me got this. Okay. When he pops back on, we'll bring him back on. Um, so, yeah, there he is. We lost you for a minute, buddy. Yeah, I dropped out for a second. It's all good. Um, I gave him Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State. Okay. Um, you know, Ben needs protection. End of story. Uh, Jacksonville is next. At 25, the Rams, uh, the old Rams pick. Um, what do you think? What are we giving Trevor Lawrence? What is Urban? He's got a running back. And again, Urban knows him pretty well. It's Carlos Hyde, uh, who was at Ohio State with him. Um, I would go a couple of different ways. Owosu Kimura here would look real good to go yeah, with Joe Schobert. That's what I was going to say. What do you think, Alex? They go linebacker here? I think so. I think I think I think you you need to do you need to go that route now. You you got you're gonna get a little bit of help on the offense with a new stud quarterback. You got a little a little bit of help with new wide receiver core. So why not why not bolster your defense in a sense? Okay. So um, it was last year we were talking about them moving up or down for a versatile defender and like a Javon Kinlaw, for example. Yes, we um, were. And you know you're in that same exact position again. Uh, and you have your franchise quarterback by all predictions. Yeah. And you could always add on offense, but the value, the last trending the last few years, and this year should be another example that is that value in defense. So, um, no, I agree with you. I, I think that's a solid pick for them at 25, kind of messed up my stuff at 26, but we'll figure it out. So 26, the hottest team in free agency. The Cleveland Browns, who addressed their secondary in a big way with adding the guys, basically taking half the Rams secondary to start with, uh, with Johnson and uh, Hill. Um, But I'm going to go defense here, and I'm going to do something to help out my man on the line, and that's Gregory Rousseau, the edge rusher out of Miami, who opted out of last year. Listen, and there's two reasons I'm going with him. Number one, they need someone to stick on the other side of Miles Garrett. I knew exactly where you were going to go with it. Number two, my son's girlfriend goes to the U, so I, I gotta be, I gotta show the respect. 
I want to know their, I don't know if they know about him, I want to know their view on De'Aaron King. And we'll get to De'Aaron King after it's over. his decision on staying in school. He needed to stay in school, I told you that. <laughs> I want to know, you've seen him play. I have, That's we'll get to it, I promise. Um, but yeah, Gregory Rousseau, he, like I said, he opted out of the this season. He is the 18th ranked prospect in this draft. To add a guy with that athleticism to the other side of Miles Garrett, you've now made that defensive line a problem with uh, Sheldon Richardson and Jenkins that they brought in from Philadelphia. So we'll go Russo there to the Browns, and now I get to pick for the Ratbird. I mean the Ravens. Um, oh, he did it. I hope. Uh, I hope Sonny's watching. <laughs> um. All right, so. They are actually in an interesting spot because they just added uh, Zeitler, which Alex and I talked about was huge for them to protect him and to open holes for J.K. Dobbins, who, when he went to them, it bothered the snot out of me. Um, But you know what? I'm going to help them out a little more, and I'm going to go Jalen Mayfield for Michigan. Okay. So I'm taking one team I hate to another. Uh, but he's an offensive tackle. Uh, I really think on the edges is where they got beat a little bit last year when Lamar got hit. He's the best remaining tackle in the uh, on the draft board. There you go. So we're back to NFC South with the New Orleans Saints. It's a new day in New Orleans. It was what was it? Fifteen years to the day after he signed his free agent deal, Drew Brees announced his retirement. Probably the most adorable retirement announcement you could have seen. Jameis is going into the season as a starter. I, I, I don't think they are going to play with Taysom Hill. So, Frank, are you protecting Jameis, or are you boosting his weapons? Uh, is Waddle's on the board, right? No, Waddle went to the Chargers. Oh, right. Sorry. So, um... I'm protecting him then. Okay. Alex, what about you? Would you protect him? Would you give him more? I'd give him a little help, I think, on offense. Um, I think just with Michael Thomas kind of being a little bit injury prone as of late, and outside of that, who are their weapons? Kamara, Michael Thomas. Kamara, yeah, but... Here's an interesting name, and it's another one that's tough to say, but because I watch him once a year, I can say it. How about Pat Fryer move the tight end out of Penn State? New Orleans has been looking for a tight end since Jimmy Graham became absolute garbage. A tight end would help for sure. Yeah, especially with their check down offense. It's not just always the Camara. Mm-hmm. The question is, do you burn a first round pick on Pat Fryermuth or do you protect him first and get Fryermuth in round two? I guess maybe a little protection and then you hope that uh, the tight end falls to the second round. I just don't know where they're picking in the second round. Or you could double up and trade, or trade down and then double up on a protection and then add. Uh, I think they'd almost have to do that yeah. in this spot. I mean, if I mean, I, I don't think this is going to fall the way we're doing it here. But just looking at New Orleans' needs, it, they're going to have to do something like that because they're another team that's aging and has a lot of holes. It wasn't just a quarterback who was near the end of that football line. Here's the other thing. I don't know if you saw, but uh, my boy from Ohio State, um, defensive back, they thought they were going to trade him. He was the MVP of the national championship game. He's from Cleveland. Why can't I think of his name now? This is going to bother me. When I say, somebody doesn't say the name, I'm going to know who it is. Um, Marshawn Lattimore. Lattimore got arrested. Possession of a stolen weapon. Ugh. In Cleveland. Big surprise. Um, so, now with Marshawn Lattimore maybe getting suspended, do you have to burn a pick on a defensive back? Uh. Who's left on the board? I'm flipping through like the top hundred right now. 
I got one. I got one on my list, but he's. I, I have him picked as to go next to Green Bay. So. Well, then you know what? Let's do it. Let's go um, offensive line here. Um, no, let's go Fryermuth here. I just like saying that name. We go Fryermuth at twenty-eight. Get them their tight end. He's a first-round tight. He's the second best tight end behind Pitts. He's probably the most complete tight end in there, as far as his blocking ability and his able ability to catch the ball. Pitts isn't that great in the running game, but I think they're going to move him outside. So who's going to Green Bay? Well, as much as I, I hate this team and didn't want to do any research on them, I, I went I went hometown here and I gave them a little bit of love from from out of Northwestern and Greg Newsom, a cornerback. Just because of what happened in that NFC Championship uh, game this past year against uh, the, the uh, Tom Brady Buccaneers and how Kevin King got burned on the, and that one play right at, right before halftime that had the that had the sting for sure. So you need to get some help in the uh, in, on the um, in terms of a, a cornerback right here. I think I like that. And here, but here's where I'll disagree with you. Mm-hmm. You watched the Pat McAfee thing I told you about with I the did. pick of Jordan Love. Hilarious, right? Oh, of Frank, course. if you haven't seen it, the Pat Pat McAfee did the same thing we did last year, and one of his guys is a minority owner of the Green Bay Packers. He, he lived there. He bought a share. He was doing the Mel Kiper impersonation all night, and when they picked Jordan Love, he lost his mind. It is one of the funniest things you will ever watch. I think he was going to cry. I think I think really he was. When he left the room, I thought he was going to shoot someone. <laughs> so, but Aaron said something last year on Pat McAfee's show that Schefter actually retweeted after Jordan Love was picked. We haven't picked a skill player since 2002 in the first round. They have gone, you know, A.J. Hawk, Clay Matthews. Um, I'm sure there's been others. Was Eddie Lacy a first round pick? He probably was, I would imagine. I would I think just... so, too. Yeah, late first round. I... Well, they've been all late first round since Rodgers took over. Mm-hmm. So, if they right. don't go Newsom, how about Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota? The oh, wide out. Mm-hmm. I was going to I, I, – my second guy, if, if somebody had taken him, I was thinking uh, Kadarius Tony out of Florida, wide receiver. I like him too. I think he. The only yeah. question I have with Tony is, can he play in the cold? I mean, he's going to play with probably, arguably, one of the best quarterbacks to ever throw the ball. So. Yeah, but playing on a frozen tundra in January is a different animal than playing in the swamp in January. That's true. That's not a bad problem to have, though. No, can. it's not. Hi, I got to learn to play in the cold, but Aaron Rodgers is throwing me the ball. All right, Buffalo's on the clock. Frank, what do you got? Edge, Jalen Phillips. Nice. A little bit raw, but that athleticism um, and the way he uses his hands is, you know, that's the go-to here. And that Mario Addison is creeping up there, uh, and that, that contract is, is short. You know, they got, they got to add um, some power on that defensive end, and... You know you have room to grow there too, so because that's a good that's a good offense. You stay off the field a little bit more. Oh, agreed. And I got to tell you, that's he played on the other side of Russo, right? Yeah, I thought so. I would have liked Russo here too, yeah. but um, Phillips is you know a good follow up. I agree. No, that's that's a great, a great pick. Actually, what did you say? A great one, actually. That's a great pick. I like it. Um. Yeah. Especially, what receiver just went to Buffalo to play on the other side of um, of uh, Stephon Diggs? Let me check. Emmanuel Sanders. Sorry, That's right, from New Orleans. It's fine. <laughs> you got there faster than I did. That, I... It, you have to go edge rush at that point in time. Not being able to get to Mahomes is why they didn't have a better shot to get to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Mr. Mahomes, I am up at 31 for the Kansas City Chiefs. Quarterback. And 
Just yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't care what they've done in free agency. Liam Eikenberg, offensive tackle from Notre Dame. The dude ran 500 yards away from everybody in the Super Bowl. You draft every offensive lineman you can. You keep every offensive lineman you can. You build the depth. Yep. And listen, Long's been out of the league for how long? A year. Year or two? It can you know? Can Tony pass block as well as he can run block? Or Thuny? How do you say his last name? Thuny. I, I say. think it's Thuny. I, I could be wrong. I'm not really sure. No, uh, I think it's uh, Joe Tony. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, Joe Tony is a big move. They need all the offensive linemen they can find. Especially no with that half a billion dollar contract this guy's got. Uh-huh. And he's got all the offensive weapons he needs. So we're going to close the first round with the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers who brought the band back. They don't need anybody. They should just give their draft pick away. <sighs> Let's see who we can pick. To make Tom Brady better. Probably somebody on the line. Another another tackle or somebody. You make Tom Brady better. You pick Tom Brady to make someone else better. Go away. He's 60. Um, <laughs> He's 60. <laughs> here, here's one for you. And yes, he says he wants to play at least 45. He's already 42. Keep Kyle Trask in state. prefer depth at a, at a different position. Well. I'm, I'm trying to think of someone that Todd Bowles could have fun with. Oh, you want to go defense? Because I was going to go offense for depth. Uh, but yeah, well, whatever's best available. Because I'm... If you're, going going, for, if you're going defense for depth, Carlos Basham out of Wake Forest, the edge rusher. Uh-huh. Um... You have Joe Tryon, the edge rusher out of Washington, who I almost picked for the Browns. Um, Javon Holland, the safety out of Oregon, who's really good. Let me see who else we got here. Dylan Moses. Now, what about our offense? Um, Listen, he's getting old, but he re-signed in um, the running back. Fournette? Leonard Fournette. How about a flyer and Trey Sermon? Wow. Huh. Yeah, because I'm not a homer, right, Alex? <laughs> um, I mean, you can go a lot of places. You can go Terrace Marshall. Uh, you can go Rondale Moore out of Purdue if you want depth. Um, who else we got here? Javante Williams, a running back out of North, out of North Carolina, is also good there. Especially yeah, with like, that good line. I like Williams because, um, and, you know, it's uh, anecdotal, but with the Chiefs last year, I mean, the last two Super Bowl champions, the Chiefs and then the Bucks, they haven't had any glaring weaknesses, so the Chiefs took uh, Clyde Edwards to Lair. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was productive. And I think uh, Williams has the same upside, not the same exact skill set, but an no. upside in. And you're tandem in that with um, Fournette, which is which is great too. Yeah, and that's why I mean, now that I think about it, Sermon and Fournette are almost the same back. They're the bowling ball. Once they get in open field, can get away from guys, but they're not the greatest out of the backfield. I mean, Sermon can catch the ball a little bit. In Ryan Day's offense, you ha- and with Baker at Oklahoma, um, you have to be able to do that. Uh, I like Williams too. I do think they need to plan for life after Tom Brady too. To be honest with you. Yeah. Um, that's why I don't think uh, Trask is a bad pick there. Um, it's number thirty-two. There is going to be no. There's going to be no expectations. There's going to be no nothing. He's going to get paid to learn from Brady, and when Brady's ready to hang it up, go play, kid. Yeah, the, the conversation there is always, you know, we've been putting off the Brady conversation, or having it, and then putting it off because it keeps happening, and he keeps playing more and more. Um, but when does it become a reality? Right. When he's, when he's 47, it'll hit. He better not play till he's 47 because I can't handle anymore. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a genetic outlier. 
you know, so it's like him and LeBron. Yeah, you know, we we we've seen what is cap what he's capable of, and I don't with you know recovery in technology or technology and recovery becoming even more um, advanced. And I really don't see it ending, but we've been saying that for you know almost seven years now. Yeah, something like that. All right, so hang on one second, as Frank knows. All right, so we're back with the set the. Last little bit of the Big Reek and Mock Draft. In our little interlude there, we talked a little opening day. But now I want to get back to the draft. And I want to know, we had a couple of outliers in the first round from what we picked. We had a couple of eye-openers. Um, is there anybody that you guys think could fall out of the first round that we think is a first-rounder? And I'm not talking about the ones we took a, a flyer on. I'm not talking about Friar Muth. I'm not talking about Williams at 32. Um... I'm not even talking about uh, what we did in the in the twenties. Is there anybody from that top 15, 16 picks that you guys think could fall and has the, the potential to fall? We're talking between. We know Lawrence isn't. We're pretty sure Wilson's going to the Jets. Could Fields fall? For, could Fields fall out of three? I mean, are, are, is everybody convinced the Niners are taking Justin Fields? The, no, the quarterbacks, I was going to mention Matt Jones. The quarterbacks are the most um, unpredictable, I think. Because uh, you see Matt Jones, you see Justin Fields. We could And Trey Lance, you could throw Trey Lance in here too. But I, I think more of a surprise would be Fields or, or Jones. And it's because of the skills, but it's also like we don't know where our team's heads are at. Maybe the Niners traded up for Jones, but he could also not be high on people's boards and move into the second round. You know, you don't know how this plays out. Um, he's more of a sure thing than a Lance, and he's more conventional than even Justin Fields. But in today's NFL, I think Fields is, you know, pretty conventional just the way things are shaking out. But, um, yeah, I, I think that position overall is the, more, is the most we, – we could see it shake out more ways than one, obviously, uh, more than other positions. No, I agree. And I, I was going to ask which one of the quarterbacks you felt could fall. I mean, I put Mac Jones to Carolina at eight, which I was the first time the two of you were like, whoa. Um, yeah. But, you know, if Jones fell, I see him with New England. I was. I think he's anywhere between 15 to 20, whoever, needs a, whoever desperately needs a quarterback in there. Would you take him if he fell to 20? Possibly, but I think I think you need to I need you need to figure out your line situation before anything else at this point. You know, but yeah, but the first round wasn't big with linemen. And you got guys, and again, I'm gonna be a little bit of a homer on here, but you got Josh Myers, who was the guard center at Ohio State. Um you still have quality offensive linemen in round two. Um I, I only say that from the perspective as being a homer myself too that it would make Bears fans maybe feel a, a tad bit better knowing that you're vesting into the team. If you, what, what wouldn't shock me and what poss, what's a possibility is they might go wide receiver, which unless it, unless it's an absolute grand slam, I, I don't think all of Chicago will be just like gung ho about it. So let me ask you this: if they if they a wide receiver fell to twenty, and you had to flip a coin, or well, not even flip a coin, draw a straw between uh-huh. Waddle. Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase ain't getting out of the top five or top six. Um, if you had to flip a coin between those two, Waddle and and Smith, mm-hmm. uh, probably Waddle. Bigger body, I think so. Just bigger frame, a little more physicality. No, I got gotcha. you. So Frank, let's talk about your Giants. All right. Um. You took Tucker there because you gave Horn to the Cowboys. Um, what other spots do the Giants really need to improve? I mean, they've added to the wide receiver core, which was huge. Um, they did move from Kevin Zeitler. Um, now, Tucker was a defensive back, or was he a lineman? Lineman. Lineman, okay. Um, where else would you have gone here if someone fell? So, so, if someone fell, um, I would I would say I would I would think about Smith, but with that Galladay signing, um, 
Well, you could you could do a lot of things. You could compliment Galladay with Smith, so that's not really a, a you're not canceling that out. No. Just, yeah, because of the play styles. But yeah, I would say it, for falling, I would say that's the only feasible one. Okay. Um, obviously, if Sewell fell, he's an upgrade of of Tucker, but um, I I like Tucker a lot. I, I like Tucker not as much, but almost as much. No, I hear you. Listen, if Sewell gets past Cincinnati, not happening. But oh, and that's, we're talking about falling. Kyle Pitts wouldn't hurt. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. <laughs> But, I mean, the top five that we did, I think, are pretty much what everybody else is saying. A lot, I think Kuiper even had Pitts go into Atlanta at four in one of his mocks. Um, I, I just Cincinnati cannot let him go. They can't. They're going to screw their franchise even harder than they have already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would say overall, the you know, I, I said Chalk with Wilson, but um, this top five, top 15, top 10, Top twenty even is pretty straightforward. It gets a little fishy with the depth this year. You know, there's more of a um, hit or miss factor with there. I think there's some. Well, it's like any year, but um, yeah. But I think more than other years, more than last year. Yeah, that you're that's more laid out than usual. That that top that cream of the crop. Is it more laid out because the smaller schools didn't play, and no, we really more- only had the big school tape? But what's what smaller school guys really like one or two outliers of really stand out, you know, in, in other years, like in that top 15, you know, that's I, true. I, that is power five guys usually. Yeah. But maybe one to three. No, I got you. I just, it, it, it is a definitely a weird draft. I mean, last year was weird with it being all virtual and everybody was at home and they still had yeah, 10 we, minutes. On- we had a full year of tape. We had pretty much a full year of tape. So it was, yeah, it was basically the same thing, just except for the way they did the draft. This year's a little different, um, especially with just the in-conference games. Um, didn't see a ton of blowouts like we usually do. Um, the other thing I'm shocked at is if Sean Wade messes up Ohio State's take somebody taking an Ohio State corner in the first round for however many years, it's going to annoy me. I mean, how do you get torched like that in the national championship game? That was rough. It was beyond rough. Oh, man. So, listen, the first mock draft is in the books. Um, Boys, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. And listen, I got to tell you, Alex and I talk a lot. Frank, to have you back on was awesome. It was great. I I felt a little sloppy. um... Oh, you were good, dude. Trying to get reps again, because this is fun. <laughs> trying to get reps again. Well, I haven't decided if I'm doing the uh, live reaction show to the draft or not. That's it's a little rough, but it's it's in Cleveland, man. I may have to. I mean, that's yeah, the reason, I, I, that's the reason I, I did the mock draft. I wish I could go. I got friends who are going to be downtown all weekend. Do you see the um? Do you see the sketches that were sent out? What they're gonna do? Yeah, it looks like a good setup. Yeah, it's gonna be in between. It's gonna be right on the lake. Um, in one row downtown, it's all the way to the left is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Great Lake Science Center is next, and then First Energy or Brown Stadium is the last thing there. Uh, it's gonna be in between them on like a wharf setting. Um, so it's gonna be windy. It's probably gonna be a little chilly, especially in Cleveland in April. Um, but this is going to be cool. I mean, the flats are ready to go. They've got all the distancing and the roped off areas are, are getting set up. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be nice to have fans there again. You know, last year was a little weird in Goodell's basement. <laughs> no, listen, man, we, I mean, what pick did we end up on? Was it 20 Philly picked what? 23, 22 last year. Yeah, it was Philly. Um, that was our last pick that we watched. It was 22. I said we were just going to do the top 20 because of how long it takes. And obviously, if I do that, I'd have to do the same thing again. But, I mean, it just it takes so long to pick to announce a name. I feel bad for... I felt like a baseball broadcaster trying to fill time in between. I think it's honestly because some of these teams are waiting till the last moment to pick a name out of a hat on some occasions. 
Yeah, it was like me with the Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's the Washington. All right, let me ask you this, Frank. I don't know if you've seen the movie. Have you seen the movie, um, The Replacements, with Keanu Reeves? Yeah. Do they need to name them the Sentinels? I like the uh, I like the Red Tails. Oh, okay. Little homage to Tuskegee Airmen. I like that too. Yeah. Um, That's my favorite one. I think they should name the Sentinels and Keanu Reeves in a uh, Shane Falco jersey should lead him onto the field. Oh, gosh. Hey, man. You think that's cheesy? What was it? Uh, 2016, Charlie Sheen actually uh, called the Indians and asked to throw out the first pitch in full uniform as Rick Vaughn. Really? The, C- the Cubs would have not known what to do if that would have happened. No, true. <laughs> that place would have lost its mind. That would have been great. I, I still think he should have done it. Cleveland might have won a World Series. Oh, God. It's the only reason I didn't root for the Cubs in that series. The only reason they'd have played anybody else, I'd have rooted for the Cubs, but not the tribe. All right, so we're gonna wrap this thing up now. I want to thank you guys again for doing this. Thank you for the work you put into it because I could tell just by the insight you gave on your picks, you guys actually did a lot of work. Frank, you said you basically drove yourself nuts. Um, so Alex, what's coming up on row seven? I did see you put out another episode the other day, I haven't had a chance to listen yet, but what we got coming up. I did. I am working. I don't know if I'll do this one on my own or if I'll have somebody on, but I'm, I'm trying to plan on doing that one on Wednesday. Obviously, talking all things opening day, Thursday, bright and early, 11 o'clock uh, my time, 12 o'clock uh, central time or eastern time, I should say. So just focusing all things baseball right now. <laughs> hey, Frank, are you a baseball guy at all or no? No. no. Um, I try to watch the Yankees every year and I never get to it. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a joke with my friends. Um, uh, am I gonna watch playoff baseball this year? And it never happens. So. Um, gotcha. Okay. No. No big deal. Just just figured I'd ask because I know uh, Mike and I are are quite the baseball buffs. You know, obviously him his Mets, my my White Sox. So just figured I would ask. You know, see where you're at. Yeah. No. Uh, what's exciting about it for you? Um, I'm, well, I mean, I played it half of my life. So. Okay. Yeah. There you go. That, that's that's definitely why and i think that's that's probably my number one outside of that and then i, I mean i guess i don't watch every single game and, and it's always much more fun going in person but just the knowledge that i have over the course of my 30 plus years of life and watching baseball and eating it sleeping and breathing it is why i'm such a fan so that's why yeah my my, my um thing with it is I, I would agree I have, I have a few friends that, that have played through high school and, and one's playing in, in Juco now but um it's, it's just not really accessible like other sports are for a non athlete for that sport uh, the, I got reason, you. the reason I got deep into MMA and, and Jiu Jitsu is because I, I'm doing it so it's nice. that, that's the reasoning and obviously that's accessible for people that like seeing people other people get punched in the face um but I don't, I just don't see baseball the same way, but yeah, that's cool that you, you can still have that connection with it. Right. No, I, I, I hear you on that though. Frank, did you watch the fight last night? Yeah. My boy got his face beat in. Yeah. I was thinking, um, yeah. And Gano looked really good. He looked really improved. And that's, that's a scary man with, with techniques. So, um, didn't Stipe beat him once? Yeah. No, he, he 50, 40, 40 him. Um, he out wrestled him, and then in that in that wrestling exchange last night, and got him to look like a like a new man. So, uh, oh, he was coming for him. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. We get so a third the, fight. The big fight is John Jones and Ganu, right? That's that's what's on tap. Yeah, um, the thing with John wants um, a big paycheck, which I think he deserves. I think a lot of those guys deserve it. They they should unionize, uh, like the other sports leagues do. But um, I don't see that happening anytime soon, unfortunately. But yeah, he deserves he deserves a lot of money, and um, I think his skill set at heavyweight is is going to be interesting. Yeah, no, and maybe I'll do an MMA show and have you on again. It's been a lot of fun reconnecting with you. Um, I know we started doing this thing over. Oh, we did our first mock draft, or we know we did an AFC North preview. It was me, you, uh, Joey Bag of Donuts, yeah. and Sonny. Um, it's a, he's a Ravens, so he had a Ravens fan, a Browns fan, a Steelers fan, and then he took care of the Bengals because, as he said, no one cares. 
Um, <laughs> not my words, but agreed. And I got to tell you something. He moderated the whole thing, and you had a Steelers, Ravens, and Browns fan talking smack the entire night. To the point where I brought up Tim Tebow's playoff win to the Steeler fan. I mean, we were throwing down, and he stayed right with us. It was great. <laughs> that didn't get personal at all, I'm sure. Oh, no, no, no. Between no. calling, between Sonny calling them the Clowns, the Bungles, and the Squealers. Oof. Me calling the Ravens the Ratbirds. Um, Joey getting very offended by the Tim Tebow comment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we had a blast with it though. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's all I know. It's all fun and games. This is a you know, this is a child's game. All mm-hmm. of them are. So it's, we're just having fun, and we're not even playing it. So it's you know, it's just commentary and it's just riffing. So I let you guys go. <laughs> I don't. I I, I got to tell you though, I had so much fun doing that. And then him and I actually did. What was it? The night after the national championship game, we did a mock draft. Yeah. Um And I mean, you want to talk about early? You're talking day after the title game in January. But listen, man, I had a blast. I'm so glad you're able to come back and do it tonight. Uh, as far as Big Recon goes, I'm supposed to be on another baseball show this week. Looks like it's going to be Wednesday. I will get that out to everybody to let you know how it goes. Uh, this weekend, Sunday night, I will come to you with a for opening weekend wrap-up for the Mets. I got to do a Cavalier show very soon because they just did some crazy stuff too. Mm-hmm. But... Did you see they had offers from four teams for Larry Nance and didn't get rid of them? I didn't know Philly, that, no. Boston, Washington, and one other team out west wanted Larry Nance, and they all said no. Wow. Thank God. I don't want to buy another jersey. <laughs> so we're going to sign off, and again, we will come to you with a draft wrap-up, and I will probably get to you guys and let you know if I'm going to do the live watch. If I do the live watch, Alex, I will come to you for pick number 20. I just, okay. I got to see it. And I will just implode on screen. <laughs> so, this is Big Recon signing off. You can, Alex, tell everybody where you can find you. Uh, Row 7 Podcast, um, Google, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Pandora Podcast, you name it. Uh, that's where you can listen to it. As far as Twitter, you, uh, you can check out my Twitter page, at Row 7 Podcast. Uh, Posting about all new content, retweeting stuff, quote retweeting stuff, you know, talking smack with Mike, all that good stuff like that. Oh, and uh, fast recovery to Eloy, by the way. Yeah, that that's that hurt my soul. I know it did. I know it that did. Hurt. When I saw that, it hurt mine too because I know how much you love him. That, but you know what? I remember what happened in 2016 with Kyle Schwarber, tore his ACL like early in the season, came back. Rest is history. If our prediction is correct, we'll be talking World Series in October between our two teams. So, Frank, you said you're going to get back into it. Where are we going to? Is it going to be Clubhouse Sports again? Are you going to fly, are you going to fly a new title? No, it's um, just me. And uh, yeah, I, I needed a break for a while. I got you. I, I was burnt out, and um, I, I think I'm just going to come back and I'm going to do stuff that's fun, and I'm going to do stuff that I think is cool. That's not pertaining even to sports. I mean, I have a. a a wall of comics here that just, there's a lot that you know there's a lot that, that speak to my uh creative side and i want to talk about you know and i mentioned mma and you know that that's where we're at right now um what's your so youtube yeah, channel uh just just my name just frank it's just frank Estrav. It's nice just, uh, so um dc or marvel uh marvel actually um comics wise even obviously you have the mcu I really like the Snyder Cut, though. Uh, I didn't watch it yet, but I'm going to. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, even even comics-wise, just across the board, they, they just tell more interesting stories, I think. Agreed. Agreed. So, Big Recon can be found on all three spots. You're watching this now. Facebook, Inst- uh, YouTube, and on Periscope on Twitter. At Big Recon on Sport on, you, on Twitter. God, I can't even talk tonight. Uh, the actual audio of the podcast is... Google, Anchor, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Radio, Public. Everybody have a great rest of your weekend, which isn't that much longer. Have a great week. Here's to opening day. I'll talk to you guys later in the week. Have a good one. See ya.